join kids hat family tia i guess we have come too far from our camp when will we go back I am feeling hungry. It will take some time to food. Those berries look yum. I think I can treat on them for the time being. Tofu, stop. Do you even know what those berries are about? They look yum to me. That is all I know. But they can be poisonous. You are in the middle of a jungle. Poisonous? Come, let me tell you a story on our way back to the camp. On a long sunny day, there was a fox walking in a desert. Hungry and thirsty, All that he could see was miles of sand and barren rocks. Oh, it is so hot. I need water badly. He kept on walking and suddenly he saw a well. Thank God. I finally found a well. Now I will no longer be thirsty. He ran and ran in great excitement. The moment he leaped on the well's wall to check water, he lost his balance and fell in the well. Help! Help! Somebody, please help me. This well is really deep. How would I ever get out of this place? Nearby, a goat was passing the well. When she heard the fox, she went to peep over the well. Hey fox! What are you doing inside this well? Oh goat, isn't it too hot outside? I just came into this well to cool myself off. Why don't you also hop in and enjoy this cool and refreshing water? Not even thinking for a second, the goat jumped into the well. Hey fox, you were right. This water is actually very refreshing. I could spend all my day out here. After some time, the goat stops and asks the fox, "Wait a second. How in the world will we manage to get out of this well?" "Oh, it's going to be simple. If you stand on your two feet and push me up, I can manage to reach to the top of the well and then pop out of the well." The goat once again without thinking twice does as the fox said. Hey fox, what about me? How would I get out? Ha 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 ha. I guess you have to think about it on your own. But I helped you getting out of the well. Who asked you to? You should have thought about the consequences before taking any actions. So one should look before one leaps. Yeah, Tofu, always. Because you never know what danger you might get into. And those wild berries, they might have been harmful for you. Eh, yeah, Tia. One should always check before taking a step further. Look, there is our camp and I can already smell the dinner is ready. Yay! Let's go. Tia, 
Priya, I can't do it. Try tofu, you can. I can't. Anyways, it's too high for me and I'm too short. Listen, Tofu, I have a story for you. Would you want to hear it? Sure. The Sour Grapes Once in a forest, there lived a furry fox. He was wandering around the forest in search of food. I am so hungry. I need to eat something. The fox was passing a vineyard but he wasn't aware it was one. I am so hungry that I can't even see what that round thing is. He went a little ahead but stopped as he noticed the smell of the delicious grapes. Wow! There are so many grapes in this vineyard. My mouth is watering. The fox looked at the grapevine and drooled. The fox jumped up towards the grapes. But the grapes were too high for him. He tried and tried, but the effort was futile. He tried again and this time he was about to touch them, but failed again. Oh, I am so tired. These grapes are too high. I can't reach them at any cost. He sat there and thought for a long time that how he can get those grapes. He suddenly got up and said to himself, Those grapes are probably sour. In fact, I don't like grapes. Why should I try so hard for them? The fox couldn't reach the grapes and hence escaped by making excuses. But his tummy kept growling of hunger and he had to go without eating anything. So Tofu, the fox had to go empty-handed because he just made an excuse. Always remember, you won't achieve your goals if you give up by making excuses. So let's go! And try again. Homework, Tia? Tofu, it's dinner time and you haven't completed your homework yet? I hope you know that your teacher will be really angry. I will do it after this cartoon, Tia. But please help me so that I can finish it fast. You have been watching TV all day. 
you should get up and do your homework first my hand has been hurting since morning i'm giving it some rest also dear sister will you please get my bag and pencil box from the room excuses and more excuses he should know his priorities right hmm Did I forget it in school? What will I tell my teacher in school? You should be more responsible, Tofu. You are a big boy now. Anyway, complete the rest of your homework at least now and be more careful next time onwards. Tofu, let me tell you a story. In a land far away lived a hard-working and kind trader. Mostly he traded in salt. He also had a horse that was very lazy and always avoided work. The trader used him to carry sacks of salt from one town to the other. Here, let me load these sacks up and let's go to the town across the river to sell this salt. I am so tired today. Why do I have to work every day? I wish I could sleep throughout the day. But no, I have to carry these loads of salt and move. Come on, horse. Start walking. Cross that bridge. Until then, I'll pack some food for myself. The horse was crossing the river. Suddenly, he slipped and fell into the water. As he was carrying sacks of salt on his back, the salt got wet and dissolved in the water. So when the horse got up, the sacks on his back were lighter. The horse thought to himself, Wow, this seems to be a good idea. Every time I dip in the river, 
the salt would dissolve and my burden could be less. I must try doing this more often. I hope Master is not watching. When the Master reached the town to sell the salt, it weighed just half of what he loaded. Thinking it might be his miscalculation, he sold whatever salt was left and returned home with his horse. The next morning, he again loaded his horse with the sacks of salt and started to pack his food. The horse yet again started walking before him and made it to the bridge. I must try the dipping trick again before master reaches here. The trader got really confused. As the sacks started weighing lesser every time. The horse purposely started slipping into the water every day. So that the sacks became lighter. One day, the trader followed the horse. and hid in the bushes. To his surprise, he noticed the horse's new trick. Oh, that's so cunning. I must teach this lazy horse a lesson soon. So the following day, instead of salt, the trader filled the sacks with cotton and tied him to the horse's back. Out of his new habit, the horse purposely fell into the river. Oh no, no! What is happening today? What is going wrong? How are these sacks getting heavier? Oh, my back hurts! What? This time, as the sacks were filled with cotton, it soaked water and became heavier. The horse dipped again and again in water, thinking to drain the salt off somehow, but all went in vain. He somehow managed to get up and cross the bridge.
he sat on the ground and panted as the sacks had gotten really really heavy The trader laughed at him and said Horse I am your master this is your work I work very hard and worship my work I don't make excuses or find tricks to fool others and avoid work I must teach you to never repeat this and avoid your work The horse learned his lesson and never tried to avoid his work again What a wise trader. Right Tofu? He taught the lazy horse a good lesson. Come, let me give you the big bitter medicine for your hand. But hey, I can see it's totally fine now. Maybe you have forgotten about the pain. Tia, I never had any pain. I just wanted to sit and watch cartoons. I was the lazy horse today. I am sorry, Tia. I'm really worried about my teacher scolding me tomorrow. Here. Take your books, Tofu. I also was the trader today. I just wanted you to learn a lesson. Now you should promise me that you will always do your work and yes I will help you with your homework. Oh, thank you Tia. Please let's finish my homework quickly. I don't want to be lazy at all. I will always finish all my work before doing anything else. I promise you that. Tofu, wolves are known to be clever and cunning. My childhood memories with wolves are quite interesting, especially the story of the wolf and the seven little goats. The wolf and the seven little goats? Wow! I haven't heard that one. Tell me the story, Tia. The wolf and the seven little goats. Once upon a time there lived a mama goat and her seven little kids. This was a happy little home. All the seven little kids used to play in the meadows, into the wild with the butterflies and birds singing along. Their days used to go in complete harmony and bliss. Until one day a big black wolf noticed these little kids playing in the meadow. Ha ha ha. Such an easy treat they are for me. I haven't eaten since ages. I'm sure these would make delicious lamb chops for my dinner tonight. He waited for the moment when the mother goat would leave her kids alone. patiently hiding in the bushes Children I'm going to the market to buy bread and cookies for you I'll be back by evening Just make sure you remain conscious of this big bad wolf But mommy how would we know if it's not you The wretched wolf can easily be recognized with his hoarse voice and black feet don't open the door or else you little ones would get into danger don't worry mummy we would take care of ourselves the mother goat went off 
to the market and the kids made doubly sure with the locks on the door. After making sure that they are safe in their little home, off they went to play when suddenly there was a knock on the door. Hello my children, open the door, your mother is back. Hearing the voice, the youngest one scampered to the door. Mummy, mummy, she's back. In no time, the eldest one ran to catch his little sibling. No, it's not our mummy. She hasn't got such a rough voice. And then, looking at the door, the eldest kid shouted back saying, Go away, you big bad wolf. A mother doesn't have such a hoarse voice. Hearing this, the wolf got annoyed and ran to get a box of chalk as he had heard that this would make his voice as soft as that of a baby. But kids, you shouldn't do this at any cost as this would only make your tummy ache badly. So off he went and cut off the whole box of chalk. Knocking on the door again, he said, Hello kids, your mother is back. Look what I have got for you. Cookies, breads and ginger ale. Oh, that sounds like a mother. Should we open the door now? But look down there. A mother has not got black feet. This is surely the wolf. Go away, you big bad wolf. A mother has not got black feet, but beautiful white feet. Hearing this, the wolf ran to the miller and jumped into the mountain of white dough. He was all white from head to toe. Running back to the house, he knocked again and said, Kids! Your mother is back. Open the door. That sounds like a mother and also the feet are white. We should open the door now. Not knowing what danger awaits them, all the kids ran to the door and opened it. But just to see who was standing there, the big bad wolf gave a loud laugh and brushed off his white powder. Hello kids, are you ready to become my feast tonight? The kids ran here and there to save their lives. One went inside the kettle, the other in the oven. One looked for a place under the bed and the other tried saving itself by hiding in the pot. The youngest one was so tiny that he managed to hide himself inside the clock case. The wolf, having no mercy, started taking them out from their hidings. One by one, he rolled them in a ball and gulped them up. Ah, there goes the first one. Oh, the second one is under the bed. Here you go. In no time, he ate all the kids except for the youngest one who was hiding in the clock case. With his tummy full, he burped and left the home. When the mother returned, she was shocked to see the door open and waited for the biggest nightmare that might have come true. The house was all upside down. The crockery was broken. The curtains were torn. The chair was broken. And the kids were nowhere to be found. She cried for them. <laughs> children! Oh children! Where are you? At that very moment, the youngest one came out of the clock case and hugged his mother crying and howling. Oh, mother, the bad wolf disguised us by sounding and looking like you. He ate up all my brothers and sisters. What will we do now? Don't worry. 
Let's go and look for him. They went out searching for the wolf. His tummy was so filled that he slept off in a meadow near the house itself. His snores were so loud that even the branches of the tree were shuddering. The mother goat very quietly went near him and asked her youngest kid to get scissors, thread and a needle. Off he went to get them. The mother goat very quietly slit open his tummy and took out all her kids from his tummy. They then filled up his tummy with stones as big as balls and then she stitched the tummy with the thread and the needle. The wolf had such a huge feast after so long and he slept all night. In the morning when he got up, he was so thirsty that he tried running to the well. But his belly was so heavy that he could hardly walk. He picked up his belly and managed to reach the well. But the moment he bent down to drink water, he couldn't handle the weight and fell in the well. The kids were looking at all of this from their window and shouted happily. Mommy, mommy, the wolf has died. Now we can play freely outside without any fear. And they lived happily ever after. Now that was one cunning wolf. But Tofu, if you be bad to others, bad happens to you too. Always remember that. Yeah, Tia. Tofu? But why so? I'm just trying to get my ball out. But see those red ants. You better be careful. Thanks, dear. Sit. I'll tell you an interesting story. The fox and the sick lion. Once upon a time, there lived a lion in the forest. As the lion was growing old, he was unable to hunt for his food. He thought that without food, he would die of starvation. So the lion thought of a plan. He decided to lie down in the cave and pretend that he is ill. And whosoever will come to meet him will become his prey. Being the king of the jungle, the lion announced he was sick and summoned the animals to come and hear his last will. The 
The lion put his sinful plan to practice and it started working. Poor animals didn't know about his wicked plan and fell into his trap. Many of his well-wishers got killed. One day, a fox came to visit the sick lion. The fox was clever and discovered the trick. He stood on the outside of the cave at a respectful distance and asked, How are you, sir? I am not feeling well at all. But why don't you come inside to meet me? No, thank you, sir. I notice that there are many prints of feet entering your cave, but I see no trace of any returning. Still, if I come inside, I would be a fool. And the fox saved his life and informed other animals too. So Tofu, the moral of the story is, you should never trust a fake person. What in the world are you trying to do? I am trying to pluck those juicy fruits from this tree. <laughs> but do you think you will be able to pluck them? They are so high. Oh, I wish I could fly and pluck those fruits. I so wish I had wings. To wish is not bad. But one should be conscious about the consequences. Come, I'll tell you a story. The Tortoise and the Eagle A young tortoise was lazing around the riverbank, looking at the birds flying in the sky. He stared at them and started thinking out aloud. I wish I could fly like those birds. Up high in the sky, I'll watch the beautiful sceneries and beauty of the world from top of the world. Oh, I so wish that. Nearby, an eagle was sitting on a stone, listening to what the tortoise was thinking out loud and couldn't resist but ask. Why do you want to fly? You should be happy with what you are gifted with. I wish I could fly with no trouble of crawling on the ground. So say that you want to fly because you don't want to crawl, not because you wish to see the world from the sky. Anyway, what will I get in return for making you fly in the sky? I'll give you the riches of gold from the Red Sea. So the eagle grabbed the tortoise in its claws and soared up high in the sky, making him see all the beautiful sceneries of the world. Flying higher in the clouds and closer to the stars, it was indeed a mesmerizing moment for the tortoise. While the eagle was flying over the riverbank, the rest of the tortoise were basking in the sun, 
Suddenly, the tortoise flying high up in the sky said, I wish my friends could watch me flying so high in the sky. I am sure they would get jealous watching me. What? Why would you want your friends to get jealous of you? I want them to see that I can fly and they cannot. It's such a nice feeling. What an evil friend this tortoise is, thought the eagle. With this, the eagle dropped him on the ground and asked for his treasure. Now give me my reward. <laughs> there is no reward. I was just kidding about the gold so that you could take me for a ride. And with this, the tortoise left. The eagle couldn't tolerate his insult and decided to teach him a lesson. So the next day, the eagle went to the tortoise and said, Hey, would you like to go for a sky ride again? Yes, sure. I would love to. The eagle once again picked him up and clenched him in his claws. The tortoise, while enjoying the ride, said to the eagle, Why did you bring me again for the ride, even though I dishonoured my promise of rewarding you? That's because, tortoise, you wish to make your friends jealous, but at my cost. And now I'll let you enjoy the free fall. The eagle let his claws loose and the tortoise went falling down. Screaming for help and flying no longer, he crashed on the ground with a thud. Thanks to his shell, he didn't get injured. Soon, his old friends surrounded him and said, Hey, our young friend, you wanted to see the world from high up in the sky. To dream big is not a sin, but to dream it at the cost of others is just not justifiable. I have learnt my lesson now. I should be thankful to God for what I am blessed with. It was my shell only that saved my life. I should be happy with what I have and also should not use others for my selfish reasons. I surely have learnt my lesson. Tia, now I know what you were trying to say. I learnt a lesson too. One should think about the consequences before one wishes for something. I should be happy with what I am blessed with. I should rather look for an alternative to pluck those fruits. Wait, I'll get a ladder. <laughs> Tofu, you learn things quite fast. Tia, where are you? I am here, Tofu. What happened? Tia, you keep on teaching me new morals through different stories. Today I'll tell you a story that our teacher taught us in class. Oh really? I'm so eager to listen to it. The Dog and the Bone Once upon a time, in the dark alleys of a small village, there lived a dog. <coughs> He was a stray dog who had to live on anything that he found on the streets, in the bins or at the mercy of the people who would feed him every now and then. One day, while passing by a butcher's shop, he saw that there was no one to attend the shop. He entered the shop and his eyes popped out when he saw juicy chicken, lamb, pork and turkey hanging. It was far from his reach, so he went around the cabinets to look for something. I hope I could find something to eat here, 
He went around sniffing and looking for it. And suddenly he saw a juicy big bone. He started drooling and said, My day is made. This would surely fill up my tummy. He bounced at it and grabbed it in his mouth. I'll eat this juicy bone in a quiet place where no one else would be able to take it away from me. So the lean dog very happily took the bone and looked for a secluded place. He crossed the village and entered the woods. While he was trying to cross a river, he stopped and looked at his reflection in the river. He was quite surprised at what he saw. He saw his own reflection and thought, Oh my God, there is another dog with an equally juicy bone. It looks young too. I got to have that bone as well. And the moment the greedy dog decided to bark at the other dog, the bone fell in the river. Oh, what have I done? It was my reflection in the water and the greed made me lose my bone too. He went away in sorrow with surely a lesson to be learned. Wow, Tofu! That surely was a beautiful story. So what do you think is the moral of the story? Being greedy is not good because a bird in hand is worth three in the bush. That monkey over there tried to imitate me. <laughs> oh, really? Tia, why are you laughing? Wait, I'll tell you why monkeys do this. The monkeys and the cap seller. Once, a cap seller was going to sell his caps in a village market. Caps, 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 5 rupees caps, 10 rupees caps, caps, caps. He was going through a forest. He was carrying a basket of red caps on his head. He got tired in the heat of the sun and thought of lying down under a tree for some time. He put his basket on the ground. <sighs> I am so tired. Let me take a small nap. There were monkeys on that tree. They came down and one by one took all the caps from the cap seller's basket. Then they climbed on the tree. When the cap seller woke up, he was shocked to see his basket empty. 
He searched for his caps everywhere. To his surprise, he saw the monkeys were wearing them. He found that the monkeys were imitating him. So he started throwing his cap down and the monkeys did so. The cap seller collected all the caps, put them back in his basket and went away happily. So Tofu, we should deal with cleverness in such situations because wisdom helps during difficult times. I understand. young man helping that man to cross the road? That's because he is blind and needs help to cross the road. Oh, how nice of that man to help him. Yes, it's always good to help others. Why, Tia? Come, Tofu, and I'll tell you a story. The Dove and the Ant. One hot day, an ant was walking near a river bank. The poor ant lost its balance and fell inside the water. Oh! Oh! Help me! Please help me! Help me! She screamed for help. As the flow of the river was too strong, she was carried away. A dove was watching all this from a nearby tree. The ant was struggling for life in the water. The dove felt very sad for the little ant. Help me! Please help me! Oh no! The little ant is in trouble! And he decided to help her. Help me! Please help me! He said to the ant, Don't worry my friend, I will save you. The dove quickly plucked off a leaf and dropped it into the water near the struggling ant. The ant moved towards the leaf and climbed up there and the ant reached to the shore safely. The thankful ant said, I will always be grateful to you for saving my life. Few weeks later, the ant saw a bad hunter with a gun. The hunter was targeting at the dove sitting on the tree. Guessing what he was about to do, the ant quickly bit him on the heel. Ouch! You pathetic ant! What have you done? The ant walked away happily as she was able to help the dove in return. So Tofu, just the way Dove's good deed helped him to get out of danger by the ant. Similarly, every good deed we do for others will surely come back to us. Hmm, I will always help the needy. That's like a good boy, Tofu. Tia, how important is it to be clever? 
It is important to be clever, but one should use it only for good reason, not to hurt someone. Come, I'll tell you a story of a clever monkey and a crocodile who thought he was clever but was actually a big fool. The clever monkey. Once upon a time, on a riverside, lived a monkey on a tree. The place was a paradise for him because just hopping on a stone, he used to reach a small island in the middle of the river, which was adorned by choicest and juiciest of fruits. In the vicinity of the island, there lived a crocodile couple. And every day they used to drool at the monkey, hopping in and out of the island. But the monkey was so clever that the crocodile couple never managed to lay their hands on the monkey. One day, the female crocodile said, Dear husband, I have a plan to nab this monkey. Ah, none of our tricks have worked with this clever monkey. What brilliant idea do you have now? The female crocodile whispered in his ears and all he could do was laugh sheepishly. The next day, when the monkey was busy feasting on fruits on the island, the crocodile very silently went and sat on the stone. When the monkey was done with eating, he was about to hop onto the stone, when suddenly he realized that the stone is looking bigger than usual. He understood that it was a crocodile waiting for him. He called out to the crocodile. Is that you, Mr. Crocodile? No, no, it's not me. And the monkey thought, how dumb could the crocodile get? So he thought for a second and called out to the crocodile. Oh, you surely caught me this time. I'll make your job easier now. Just open your mouth and I'll jump into it on my own. The foolish crocodile opened his wide mouth with his eyes shut and waited for the monkey to jump. The clever monkey who was watching the closed eye crocodile hopped on the head of the crocodile and crossed the river. <laughs> you couldn't fool me this time either. By clear and clever thinking, the monkey managed to trick the foolish crocodile. <laughs> the crocodile was indeed a fool who got tricked by the clever monkey. Ya yeah, Tofu! And the moral is that we must think before we do anything. Like that clever monkey and not like that foolish crocodile. What happened, Tofu? Tia, today in school, our teacher asked us to write something about the wolf. So why don't you write about it? But Tia, I don't know anything about how a wolf behaves. Come, let me tell you a story and then you would be able to figure out how it behaves. The Wolf and the Crane One day, a hungry wolf was eating his prey. So rapidly that a bone got stuck in his throat. He 
he ran around the forest howling in pain. Please help me. I will reward handsomely. Anyone who removes the bone from my throat. A passing crane took pity on the wolf. Even though the task was dangerous, the lure of the prophet motivated him to help. So he decided to help him. I will help you, but you need to stay still. I'll look down your throat and then remove the bone. As promised, the crane did his job. Now give me my reward. Reward? What reward, you greedy fellow? You had your head in my throat and instead of eating you up, I let you go unharmed. That should be reward enough for you. Go away or I'll crush you. The crane walked away disappointed. Although he felt happy that he had helped in saving someone's life. So what did you understand from this story? That one cannot trust the cunnings of a wolf. Right Tofu. And now would you be able to write about the wolf? Yes Tia. Why can't you sleep? I don't know. Can you please put me off to sleep by telling me a story? Sure Tofu, I'll tell you one of my favorite story. The Little Red Riding Hood Little Red Riding Hood lived in a hut near a forest with her mother. She always wore a beautiful red hood while going out. One day, she went to see her grandmother. On her way, she met a wolf. Huh? Hello, where are you going? I am going to see my granny. She lives behind that hill. The wolf got a wicked idea. <laughs> the wolf ran to Granny's house. her up and got into Granny's bed. After some time, Little Red Riding Hood reached the house. She saw the wolf lying in her Granny's bed. Oh Granny, what big eyes you have! So that I can see you better. Granny, what big ears you have! So that I can hear you better. Granny, what a big nose you have! 
so that I can smell you better. Oh, Granny, what big teeth you have! So that I can eat you better. <laughs> oh my God! Help me! Help me! Nearby, a woodcutter was in the forest, and he heard the scream. He ran to the house just to see the wolf attacking the little girl. He hit the wolf over the head, and this made the wolf open his mouth and shout. The granny jumped out. The wolf <gasps> ran away, and the little Red Riding Hood never saw the wolf again. So Tofu, Little Red Riding Hood, was able to save herself and her old grandmother too. What happened Tofu? Why are you so sad? Tia, I am sad because I lost my bicycle last week. My friends enjoy the ride on their bicycles, but I can't. I wish they lose their bicycles too. Tofu, I never knew you'll be so mean. You sound very selfish. You should stop this right away. Uh, Tia, Tia, sorry Tia, but I was really sad. I don't have one, but my friends do. I just feel left out. It's okay, Tofu. I can understand that you are sad. But wishing bad for others is not good. We should always think good for others. Come, I'll tell you a story about a fox who became a laughing stock amongst his friends just because he was very selfish. The Fox Without a Tail One day, a fox was walking in a forest. Suddenly, he heard a huge snap and in an immediate reaction, he jumped. But something awful happened to the poor little thing. He found his tail stuck in a trap and this gave a sharp pain in his rear. so much. Oh, my tail is stuck in a trap. What would I do now? After battling for long with his tail and the trap, he gave a final try to it and with that came another snapping voice. Tears coming out of his eyes, the fox moaned. Oh, my tail! My tail! I lost my furry, beautiful tail. What would I do now? I'll become laughing stock of my skulk now. This is so embarrassing. And he walked deeper into the forest with his head bowed down in sorrow. when suddenly an idea struck his mind. He decided to call a meeting of all his friends. Friends, I have gathered you for a reason today. While walking through the forest, I kept wondering. We have eyes, nose, ears, teeth, Legs, all for some reason. But why, why do we need a tail? It's a useless thing and keeps bothering us for some reason or the other. It either gets in way of our sitting or when kept outside is left for someone to trip over. So after a deep thought, I cut off my tail 
and want you to do the same. It feels great without that useless thing. The skulker fox kept looking at the fox in amazement as to what he was saying. It's true, but nobody has really thought about them without the tail. It surely would be painful to do that. Meanwhile, a young agile fox jumped on to the higher place and addressed the skulk. Are you saying this because you no longer have a beautiful furry tail? Here you are just talking about your self-interest so that you don't get embarrassed and feel left out of the skulk. And the rest of the skulk went off laughing away and discussing as to how selfish and mean the fox is. In order to not feel embarrassed, he wants everyone to chop off their tail. Tia, now I understood. I shouldn't be selfish and not think bad for others. <laughs> Come. I'll buy you an ice cream tofu. For your favorite rhymes, stories and more, join Kids Hat family. Subscribe here.